The Italian peninsula has a complicated political history during the medieval period, roughly defined as the time between the collapse of the Western Roman Empire AD 476 and the Italian Wars of 1494-1559, which resulted in Italy falling under foreign domination, at first under Habsburg Spain, throughout the early modern period. Late antiquity in Italy lingered on into the 7th century under the Ostrogothic Kingdom and the Byzantine Empire under the Justinian dynasty, the Byzantine Papacy until the mid-8th century. The Middle Ages proper begin as the Byzantine Empire was weakening under the pressure of the Muslim conquests, and the Exarchate of Ravenna finally fell under Lombard rule in 751. Lombard rule ended with the invasion of Charlemagne in 773, who established the Kingdom of Italy and the Papal States. This set the precedent for the main political conflict in Italy over the following centuries, between the Pope and the Holy Roman Emperor, culminating with conflict between Pope Gregory VII and Henry IV and the latter's walk to Canossa in 1077. The term Middle Ages itself ultimately derives from the description of the period of obscurity in Italian history during the 9th to 11th centuries. The secular obscure or dark age of the Roman papacy is seen from the perspective of the 14th to 15th century Italian Renaissance. In the 11th century began a political development unique to Italy. The transformation of medieval communes into powerful city-states modelled on ancient Roman republicanism. The republics of Venice, Florence, Genoa, Pisa, among others, rose to great political power and paved the way for the Italian Renaissance and ultimately the European miracle, the resurgence of Western civilization from comparative obscurity in the early modern period. On the other hand, the Italian city-states were in a state of constant warfare, adding to an overlapping with the persistent conflict between the Pope and the Holy Roman Emperor. Each city aligned itself with one faction or the other, yet was divided internally between the two warring parties, Guelphs and Ghibellines. Since the 13th century, these wars had increasingly been fought by mercenaries giving rise to the Italian institution of condottieri and the Swiss mercenary culture. After the three decades of wars in Lombardy between the Duchy of Milan and the Republic of Venice, there was eventually a balance of power between five emerging powerful states, which at the Peace of Lordi formed the so-called Italic League, bringing relative calm for the region for the first time in centuries. These five powers were the Maritime Republics of Venice and Florence, whose naval powers dominated the east and west coast of the peninsula, respectively, the territorial powers of Milan and the Papal States, dominating the northern and central parts of Italy, respectively, and the Kingdom of Naples in the south. The precarious balance between these powers came to an end in 1494 as the Duke of Milan Ludovico Sforza sought the aid of Charles VIII of France, against Venice, triggering the Italian War of 1494-98. As a result, Italy became a battleground of the great European powers for the next 60 years, finally culminating in the Italian War of 1551-59 which concluded with Habsburg Spain as the dominant power in Italy. The House of Habsburg would control Italy for the duration of the early modern period until Napoleon's invasion of Italy in 1796. Transition from late antiquity Italy was invaded by the Visigoths in the 5th century, and Rome was sacked by Alaric in 410. The last Western Roman Emperor, Romulus Augustus, was deposed in 476 by an Eastern Germanic general, Odoacer. He subsequently ruled in Italy for 17 years as Rex Gentium, theoretically under the suzerainty of the Eastern Roman Emperor Zeno, but practically in total independence. The administration remained essentially the same as that under the Western Roman Empire, and gave religious freedoms to the Christians. 
Odoacer fought against the Vandals, who had occupied Sicily, and other Germanic tribes that periodically invaded the peninsula. In 489, however, Emperor Zeno decided to oust the Ostrogoths, a Fodoratum people living in the Danube, by sending them into Italy. On February 25, 493 Theodoric the Great defeated Odoacer and became the king of the Ostrogoths. Theodoric, who had lived long in Constantinople, is now generally considered a Romanized German, and he in fact ruled over Italy largely through Roman personnel. The Goth minority, of Arian confession, constituted an aristocracy of landowners and militaries. But its influence over the country remained minimal. The Latin population was still subject to Roman laws, and maintained the freedom of creed received by Odoacer. The reign of Theodoric is generally considered a period of recovery for the country. Infrastructures were repaired, frontiers were expanded, and the economy well cared for. The Latin culture flourished for the last time with figures like Boethius. Theodoric's minister, the Italian kingdom was again the most powerful political entity of the Mediterranean. However, Theodoric's successes were not equal to him. The eastern half of the empire, now centered on Constantinople, invaded Italy in the early 6th century, and the generals of Emperor Justinian, the Lazarius and Narses, conquered the Ostrogothic kingdom after years of warfare, ending in 552. This conflict, known as Gothic Wars, destroyed much of the town life that had survived the barbarian invasions. Town life did not disappear, but they became smaller and considerably more primitive than they had been in Roman times. Subsistence agriculture employed the bulk of the Italian population. Wars, famines, and disease epidemics had a dramatic effect on the demographics of Italy. The agricultural estates of the Roman era did not disappear. They produced an agricultural surplus that was sold in towns. However, slavery was replaced by other labor systems such as serfdom. The withdrawal of Byzantine armies allowed another Germanic people, the Lombards, to invade Italy. Cividale del Friuli was the first main center to fall, while the Byzantine resistance concentrated in the coast areas. The Lombards soon overran most of the peninsula, establishing a kingdom with capital in Pavia, divided into a series of dukedoms. The areas in central northern Italy which remained under Byzantine control became the Exarchate of Ravenna. Southern Italy, with the exception of Apulia, current Calabria and Sicily, were also occupied by the two semi-independent Lombard duchies of Spoleto and Benevento. Under the imperial authority remained also much of the ports, which eventually turned into actually independent city-states. Rise of the Patriarchate of Rome The Church had played an important political role since the time of Constantine, who tried to include it in the imperial administration. In the politically unstable situation after the fall of the Western Empire, the Church often became the only stable institution and the only source of learning in Western Europe. Even the barbarians had to rely on clerics in order to administer their conquests. Furthermore, the Catholic monastic orders, such as the Benedictines had a major role both in the economic life of the time, and in the preservation of classical culture. After the Lombard invasion, the popes were nominally subject to the Eastern Emperor, but often received little help from Constantinople, and had to fill the lack of stately power, providing essential services and protecting Rome from Lombard incursions, in this way. The popes started building an independent state. Early Middle Ages Collapse of the Exarchate At the end of the 8th century the popes definitely aspired to independence, and found a way to achieve it by allying with the Carolingian dynasty of the Franks. The Carolingians needed someone who could give legitimacy to a coup against the powerless Merovingian kings, while the popes needed military protection against the Lombards. In 751 the Lombards seized Ravenna and the Exarchate of Ravenna was abolished. This ended the Byzantine presence in central Italy. Facing a new Lombard offensive, the papacy appealed to the Franks for aid. 
In 756 Frankish forces defeated the Lombards and gave the papacy legal authority over all of central Italy, thus creating the Papal States. However, the remainder of Italy stayed under Lombard or Byzantine control. The Frankish Empire in 774, upon a papal invitation, the Franks invaded the Kingdom of Italy and finally annexed the Lombards. As a reward, the Frankish King Charlemagne received papal support. Later, on December 25, 800, Charlemagne was also crowned Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire by the Pope, triggering controversy and disputes over the Roman name. A war between the two empires soon followed. In 812 the Byzantines agreed to recognize the existence of two Roman empires in return for an assurance that the remaining Byzantine possessions in Italy would be uncontested. Throughout this period, some coastal regions, and all of southern Italy, remained under Byzantine or Lombard control. The imperial authority never extended much south of the Italian peninsula. Southern Italy was divided amongst the two Lombards duchies of Spoleto and Benevento, who accepted Charlemagne's suzerainty only formally, and the Byzantine Empire. Coastal cities like Gaeta, Amalfi, Naples on the Tyrrhenian Sea, and Venice on the Adriatic Sea, were Latin Greek enclaves who were becoming increasingly independent from Byzantium. A conquest of Benevento, otherwise, would have meant the total encompassment of the papal territories, and probably Charlemagne thought it was good for his relationships with the Pope to avoid such a move. The age of Charlemagne was one of stability for Italy, though it was generally dominated by non-Italian interests. The separation with the Eastern world continued to increase. Leo III was the first pope to date his balls from the year of Charlemagne's reign instead of those of Byzantine emperors. This process of isolation from the Eastern Empire in connection with the Western world of France and Germany which had started three centuries before, was completed at the beginning of the ninth centuries. Sicily, Calabria, Puglia and the marine cities were the main exceptions to this rule. After the death of Charlemagne in the new empire soon disintegrated under his weak successes, the equilibrium created through the great emperor's charisma fell apart. This crisis was due also to the emergence of external forces, including the Saracen attacks and the rising power of the marine republics. Charlemagne had announced his division of the empire in 806. The Lombard Frank reign, together with Bavaria and Alemannia, was to be handed over to his son Pepin of Italy. After Charlemagne's son Louis the Pious died in 840, the Treaty of Erdogan in 843 divided the empire. Louis's eldest surviving son Lothair I became emperor and ruler of the central Franks. His three sons in turn divided this kingdom between them, and northern Italy became the Kingdom of Italy under Louis II, Holy Roman Emperor in 839. The first half of the 9th century saw other troubles for Italy as well. In 827, Muslim Arabs known as Aghabids invaded and conquered Sicily. The descendants, the Kalbids, ruled the island until 1053. In 846, Muslim Arabs invaded Rome, looted Street, Peter's Basilica, and stole all the gold and silver in it. In response, Pope Leo IV started building the Leonine walls of the Vatican City in 847, they were completed in 853. In the late 9th century, the Byzantines and the Franks launched a joint offensive against the Arabs in southern Italy. However, only the Byzantines won any territory in that campaign. Southern Italy with Charlemagne's conquest of 774, the north of Italy was politically separated from the south completely. Though the Byzantines had continued to hold most of Apulia and Calabria and the Lombard duchies of the south had been aloof of Pavian policies for a century, the situation was exacerbated by the loss of a centralizing Lombard authority in the north. Immediately, the Duke of Benevento, Arichis II, 
proclaimed himself a sovereign prince and set about opposing Charlemagne's assumption of Lombard kingship, creation of independent moieties under Aurechis and his successors. It was the Beneventan policy to pay homage to the Carolingian emperors but ignore their rulings. As a result, de facto independence was achieved from Frankish as well as Byzantine authority. The Duchy of Benevento reached its territorial peak under Saccard in the 830s. At his time, the Mezzogiorno was suffering the ravages of the Saracens, against whom Saccard warred constantly. He also warred against his Greek neighbours, especially Sorrento, Naples, and Amalfi. It was in a war with Naples that Duke Andrew II first called in Saracen mercenaries. In 839, Saccard was assassinated and a civil war broke out which illustrated the nature of political power in the South. It was still largely in the hands of the landowning aristocracy, who had the power to choose a prince. In 839, some chose I, the treasurer and assassin, and some chose Sikonulf of Salerno, who was installed at Salerno. This civil war continued apace for a decade, during which the Gastaldates of Benevento took the opportunity to entrench their independence, especially Capua, which sided with Sikonulf. In 849, the Emperor Louis II, in one of his first acts as King of Italy, invaded the peninsula and imposed peace between the Lombard factions. He divided the principality into two, one at Benevento, one at Salerno. Thenceforward, the history of the Lombard South is one of declining, competing powers. In the Tyrrhenian Greek cities, the violence raging inland between them and their fellow Greeks on Toe and Heel fostered the circumstances of de facto independence. Naples, in particular, had a history of differences with Byzantium and had in the past sought to make herself dependent on other authorities often papal. In 801, the Byzantine patrician of Sicily succeeded in creating Anthimus Duke. However, Anthimus was unable to control the cities under his rule, Gaeta and Amalfi. Subsequent to Anthimus, the patrician tried to appoint his own candidate without imperial approval. The people rebelled and accepted Stephen III in 821. During Stephen's decade of rule, Naples severed all legal ties to Constantinople and even began minting her own coins. In 840, after a brief flirtation with Frankish servitude, to the I and a Frankish duke, in the person of Duke Contard, the Neapolitan citizenry elected Sergius I their Magister Militum. Sergius established a dynasty, the Sergi, that was to rule the duchy for the next 300 years. In Gaeta, as in Naples, the violent situation inland required new power structures to maintain Byzantine authority. The Gatans received their first imperial Byzantine high party around the time of the Beneventan civil war, while the first high party remained Byzantine loyals. In 866, the sudden appearance of a new dynasty under Dosibilis I represented Gata's move from Byzantium towards independence. The first elected ruler of Amalfi was a prefect appearing in 839, simultaneous with the death of Saccard and the appearance of a Gatan Hyaptis. However, Naples, Gata, Amalfi, the Tyrrhenian cities, and Venice retained some allegiance to Byzantium until the 11th century long after becoming de facto independent. Period of confusion The period following the Beneventan civil war was one of confusion, brought on by the independence movements in the various cities and provinces and by the Saracen onslaught. In Salerno, a palace coup removed Sikonulf's successor Sikko II in 853 and destabilized that principality until a new dynasty, the Dalfaridi, came to power in 861. In 852, the Saracens took Bari and founded an emirate there, Greek power being significantly threatened, as well as Adriatic commerce. The Byzantine emperor requested an alliance from Louis II of Italy. 
Similarly, the new prince of Benevento, Adelchus, an independent-minded ruler, also sought his aid. Louis came down and retook Bari in 871 after a great siege. Louis then tried to set up greater control over all the south by garrisoning his troops in Beneventan fortresses. The response of Adelchus to this action was to imprison and rob the emperor while he was staying the princely palace at Benevento. A month later, the Saracens had landed with a new invasive force and Adelchus released Louis to lead the armies against it. Adelchus forced Louis to vow never to re-enter Benevento with an army or to take revenge for his detention. Louis went to Rome in 872 and was released from his oath by Pope Hadrian II on 28 May. His attempts to punish Adelchus were not very successful. Adelchus vacillated between nominal fealty to the Carolingian and Byzantine emperors but, in fact, by his alterations to the Edictum Rotheri. He acknowledged himself as the legitimate Lombard king. The successors of Adelchis were weak and the Principality of Benevento declined just as Salernitan power was beginning to make itself felt. Guifer of Salerno was on friendly terms with the Saracens, a habit which annoyed the popes and often put her ruler at odds with his neighbours. The South Italian lords continually rotating in their allegiances. Guifer's successor, Guimar I, made war on the Saracens. Guifer had originally associated Guimar with him as co-ruler, a practice which became endemic to the south and was especially evident in Capua.